Wait, Soylent Green is what? Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be talking about the 1973 sci-fi dystopian thriller, Soylent Green. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all that extra content. Soylent Green stars Charlton Heston, Edward G. Robinson, and Lee Taylor Young, and was directed by Richard Fleischer. Loosely based on the 1966 novel Make Room, Make Room, it tells the story of NYPD detective Robert Thorne as he investigates a murder in a dystopian 2022. Since the inception of the genre, sci-fi has often looked to the future. Hopeful wonder, cautionary tales about avoidable but imminent issues, or just an escape. Sometimes, this future is just an unspecified time in the temporal distance, but other times, these sci-fi features are assigned a year. And over the years, as the real future becomes our actual present, we reach these cinematic, futuristic years and have the unique opportunity to compare reality with fictional prediction. Utopian societies, space colonies, AI overlords, flying cars. We've seen a lot of incorrect predictions over the years, but also a handful that have come pretty close. Well, the year is 2022, and we've reached yet another futuristic sci-fi setting, that of Soylent Green. And remember, Tuesday is Soylent Green Day. The real 2022 might not be quite as bleak as the predictions on display in Soylent Green, but from a thematic standpoint, it's not really that far off, which is both impressive and disturbing at the same time. Ecological awareness was not a new concept by any means, but it was really brought to the forefront during the environmental movement of the 60s and 70s. So it's unsurprising that a lot of sci-fi stories from that time period center around ecological themes, especially in futuristic dystopian ways. And from a thematic standpoint at least, that's what Soylent Green is about. It's set in the future that's so overpopulated that hundreds of people just sleep in the stairwells of apartment buildings. So polluted that the oceans have died and there's a perpetual greenish-yellow smog in the air. And that combination of overpopulation and ecological destruction has resulted in a stark class difference and widespread food shortages, leading to the rise of the Soylent Corporation. Like I said, our 2022 isn't quite as bleak and dire as the film's predictions, but it's not entirely off the mark when it comes to many of the issues, and that thematic relevancy is possibly the film's strongest component. Unfortunately, the themes really aren't the focus here. So when people think about Soylent Green, they think about sci-fi. And it is a sci-fi movie, mostly because of its dystopian futuristic setting, but it's more of a police procedural set in the future. We're following a murder investigation and trying to uncover clues to solve the mystery. And when the plot actually focuses on that investigation, it's intriguing. Throw in a few futuristic oddities and you've got a potentially compelling story. Unfortunately, much like with its themes, this film doesn't spend nearly enough time focusing on the investigation at the center of its plot. And that unfocused nature is one of the downfalls of the film. Although the investigation is continuously mentioned, the movie repeatedly pulls you away from it in a surprisingly jumbled way. Sometimes it's to highlight the futuristic setting and themes, like when Charlton Heston and Edward G. Robinson, in his final film role, enjoy a feast of beef stew and fruit. It's certainly an aside, and only tangentially related to the plot, but you can understand its inclusion. But there are other things that feel like they're taking away from the story instead, like the romantic subplot that takes up a good chunk of the second act. And I use the term romantic very loosely here, because there's no chemistry or romance to this random relationship that emerges. All the women in this film are quite literally called furniture, and as the name implies, are just there to look nice and be used. So this romantic subplot provides no actual plot advancement, and just adds to the tedious, unfocused nature of the film. Luckily, for the film at least, Soylent Green is not remembered for its plot or for its themes, or its performances. It's remembered for its twist, and its final, very iconic line of dialogue. 
As usual, this is a spoiler-free review, so I won't be saying anything specific about it, but my guess is that the vast majority of you, even if you've never seen the film, know the twist and big reveal of this movie. It's probably one of the most spoiled endings in film history. There's a good chance that even if you've never heard of this movie, you know the ending and the line and just don't realize it's from this movie. It was spoiled for me long before I ever saw the film, so I don't really know if it affected my viewing of it, but I will say that there's a reason the twist is the only thing most people seem to remember about this movie. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. The biggest pro is definitely the thematic relevancy. As with many sci-fi films from the early 70s, this movie includes some fairly prominent ecological themes. While not necessarily the primary focus of the film, issues of overpopulation, pollution, and food shortages are core to the movie's messages. The real 2022 isn't quite as bleak as the film's predictions, but the base issues on display in this movie are, in fact, issues that we face today. We might not be eating Soylent, and front-end loader dump trucks aren't the primary method of crowd control, but the film does manage to paint a thought-provoking picture of what the future could have been, and honestly, still could end up being. On the con side, the biggest issue is how unfocused the film is. It's a dystopian sci-fi thriller and a police procedural following a murder investigation, but somehow it's not able to deliver an engaging story. And not because it can't find the right balance between the futuristic dystopian stuff and the investigation, but rather because it doesn't truly focus on either of those two things. Instead, it's tedious and jumbled in its delivery, meandering around its futuristic version of New York City for good chunks of the film without doing anything to advance the plot or themes. Con number two is sort of related to the first, and is the plot. Now, I will say that the plot that we're initially introduced to isn't bad, and is actually sort of interesting. The whole murder investigation and conspiracy element and mystery behind it all is genuinely compelling, which is probably why the answer to that mystery that we get at the end of the film is so iconic and well-known within pop culture. The problem with the plot, and why it lands in the cons for me, is that it never really sticks to its primary idea. It goes off on these random little subplot offshoots, like the whole romance subplot throughout the second act. What could have been a tight dystopian sci-fi mystery turns into a bloated and fairly dull story that's only satisfying when it finally circles back to the investigation at its core. Before I give you my rating recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying Soylent Green or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm going to give Soylent Green two and a half out of five paws. It's got some thematic relevancy and some interesting, if incorrect, futuristic world building, and it's certainly got a fun, iconic twist, but it's as unfocused as it is dystopian. I would recommend Soylent Green to fans of early 70s ecological sci-fi. If you like movies that predicted what the future would be like, then there's a chance that you might enjoy this one for its themes and low-budget charm. And if you already know the twist and the iconic line from the film, then you might want to check this out just to have an understanding of the movie and be able to say that you saw it. But just know that there's a chance that it might not live up to your expectations. If you liked Soylent Green, I would suggest Logan's Run. It's another sci-fi film from the 70s that features a shocking twist at its center. Unlike with Soylent Green, though, some of the characters make this discovery fairly early on in the film, and the story follows them as they try to come up with a plan to counter things. If you want another sci-fi film about overpopulation, you might want to watch ZPG. It's another very low-budget, early 70s film, and is more of a dystopian drama than a mystery. And if you like the ecological side of things and want yet another early 70s movie, you should check out Silent Running. This is probably the most truly sci-fi of these films, taking place entirely on a spaceship, but is also the one with the most prominent ecological themes. All right, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen Soylent Green? If so, what you think of it? And number two, what's your favorite movie about food? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information out of this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. 
And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe while you're at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.